Okay, I've added several features into the Infinity Framework, and I'm going to try to fit everything in one video. Okay, so we now have module configurations, and we can define our module in our settings file. There's we've applied the use of our application module. And as your software product grows, you may have multiple, but in this example, we're just going to stick to one, just to get familiar with these concepts. Okay, so I have a home controller and a home model and a home view. Um, easy enough. Now, basically, this is going to remove the need to define, I don't know if you remember video one, we had to provide a data parameter to our view and we specified the jQuery, the JavaScript, and the CSS. Here we can delegate that um, to our entire entire application scope. Okay? And this helps us avoid global scope pollution and it helps us optimize resource loading. Okay? So we're only loading what we need. And on top of that, everything's um, visible. Everything that you're using is right you just open your application module and look at what's involved, okay? So that's a nice organization feature. And another nice thing is that this isn't a forced configuration. So with the new version, um, you know, Infinity One syntax will still work, okay? And you just don't specify a module in your settings. Okay, so I also have a command line tool here. I'm working on a helper repository and here's just a little bit of help about the program to see the basics of what it does but I'm working on a helper repository where you can go on the web and download helpers by other contributors right into your project okay and so some collaboration going on there basically right now the tool will help us hammer out models views controllers and helpers okay so as you can see here I've created our, for the purpose of this demonstration, home controller and model, and home model, okay? So that's nice, we'll use that a little bit more down the road. Um, so let's go into our home controller. Um, it doesn't uh, include the instantiation, so that's a little fix I have to make with the command line tool. Okay, so... Let's look at some view loader enhancements. We'll just say, oh, we'll say this load equals new load. And this load view head. Oops. Okay, so notice before we had to pass our data parameter to our head. Now our module handles that for us, okay? And we don't have to worry about it. And our footer is going to be injected during the view destruct, okay? And then our module handles all of our script inclusion, as we saw in the module, okay? So that's nice. Um, let's just... I guess go in our well let's create another model so we'll say model form and we're going to utilize that HTML helper we saw in the module configuration okay and normally you might want to place your custom classes in your own custom library but for the sake of time um, where's our model there it is. It just sometimes you have to reload the directory to make it appear. But um, yeah, normally you might want to put that in a custom directory. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do that now. You could also start defining, you know, creating your base models and defining them in the application helper. I'm sorry, the model array. That way, you know, your base you can create base controllers that will be accessible to every other controller that you create with a system. So now, to demonstrate different uses of this form class, we'll just utilize 
the HTML helper. And sort of short on space again. But um, what we'll do basically is we'll pass the field array and the button label in. And then here we'll just set a blank action using the method post. Oops. Okay. And then that's that. Okay, so let's look at our really wish I had more space. Our home model. Now let's utilize that form we just created here. So we'll say public function, say home form. And form equals new form. This should be accessible to IntelliSense. Form model. Yep. And we'll provide some a string for our button label. Um, we'll say sign in. I guess eventually we'll make a little sign in form. Okay. Fields array. Let's just say um, username for now. A text field. And we'll give it an ID. Say username. Okay, save that. And fair enough, that looks good for now. Let's save that and come back in our home controller. And as we did before, we'll create a runtime function. Just so sort of following the flow. Okay, and then what we'll do, let's instantiate, just so we can sort of see the flow of things, let's instantiate our home model and pass it to our view, and we'll just do it that way for no reason. Um, home model, just so we can see the flow of things here, and we'll use our view loader. Oops, this load view to load our home view. We'll pass that data param in. Okay. So let's go to our home view here in our views and print data the instance of our home model home form. Okay, and let's look at our application. Yep, and we're going to have to uh, define our form here. So let's run and see that we're going to get uh, an error. And it says class form model not found. Okay, so it's because our application doesn't have access. So it's a nice demonstration of module scoping, I guess you could say. And then when we run, there's our form. Okay, so that's awesome. Um, let's use it in another way. Let's create a controller. Um, help, we'll say. And there, help controller was created. And help controller was popped into our controller's directory. We have to instantiate. You really need to add that into the tool to help save some time. And what we're going to do here is we'll use the form in a different way. So we'll say this. We'll just access the form in our controller, although you might want to put it in a model. Just for the sake of time, we'll do it here. Um, this help form. Function help form and 
form equals new form model. And this time we'll test out our radio buttons, which probably still need some work, but I just want to see how it flows. We'll say choose one. Okay, and our fields oh, equals array. There we go. And we'll say array text will say radio btn1 radio1 and we'll give it a name just give it the name of radio1 okay control us to save and we'll run our help controller and there we have oh okay so now we can see how see notice our css and jquery have not been um, rendered that's because we didn't specify our head we didn't load our head with that metadata inside and then once the view is destructed the footer will be injected okay so this load oops format this ah. so this load um, equals new load this load view to get our header view okay and now we'll see that again we didn't have to define our J JavaScript or jQuery and there our CSS was applied let's go in and enable all this functionality within our application which if you remember video one it's just including jQuery and running a JavaScript so when we refresh ah, better save our application module when I refresh now there's the jQuery and JavaScript and if we go to the home it's enabled there as well okay so that's nice nice feature of the module let's go into our home model and demonstrate field mapping so let's put on I'm sorry table mapping uh, let's drop in another field of type password and we'll call it user pass and this is going to ab enable us to map um, and create database tables okay so we create tables as we're developing our application which is awesome and this is still being worked out but we'll take a look at it so we define an array for our map we would say table and we'll call it users testing and <clears throat> then we'll want to define uh, we better say public here there we go then we'll define our columns and we'll map username and user pass here username user pass and oh, we don't need to terminate there okay so that's nice and now we have to include our table map helper in our applications module scope and we'll come back to our home model here and say tm equals new table map and we want to access this table map okay so 
Um, as we can see, here's an empty database called I with no tables in it. Let's run. And boom! It updated our form and it created our user's testing table. Okay, so this is a de development mode feature. And I'm just going to hit refresh. And there's users testing. Okay. Pretty awesome. Let's insert some data. Say code with Josh and just some random characters. And the post was made. We'll refresh here. And there we can see code with Josh and our random characters. Okay, so table mapping feature. Um, we've also integrated Firebug for development and testing into the framework. Um, let's see, okay, we're at 16 minutes. Let's take a look at that. So let's come here and define our Firebug helper. And now we can use it. Let's just demonstrate by coming into our home model here, and we'll just log this fields array. Okay, so firebug log trust to save, and you'll need the firebug add-on in Mozilla. Okay. And yes, we'll be able to log um, this in our post now. Okay, so when we refresh the page, uh, yeah, oops, there it is. Yeah, so now we can inspect elements, okay, elements of the DOM or whatever. Um, our JavaScript, so it's a nice development tool. And there you can see that's our form fields there. The label, the type, and the ID. Okay, so some awesome enhancements to the Infinity Framework. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.